Love One at the time was actually the most downloaded album of all time. Uh, oh. Do you regret giving it away for free? <laughs> it was a bad business plan, we always say. <laughs> we, we thought, uh, you know, it was uh, downloaded quite a lot, uh, but, you know, we're a small band, so we're just trying to do things to try and get people to hear it. And, I, and we kind of, we knew that we were coming out with film, and we knew that we were going to come out with some more music, mostly just a score. Um, but, uh, but so we kind of thought that we would take a, a little bit of a gamble and give it out for free just to start it. Uh, so what made you want to put it all out together as like a three-part thing? You get the, the last album, this album, the movie. Well, I think, you know, we don't have, we don't have a label. And, and because we don't have a label, we don't have the traditional ways to market the band. And I, I thought a long time ago with the guys that we would have a stronger voice just doing things that were a little bit more ambitious and, uh, and taking a few risks with things like giving away the record and going out making a movie, which is something like, I always tell people, for a large part, as a musician, you can take a computer and you can figure out how to make a record in your house, and, and technology has really helped with that. But with a movie, we didn't really know how difficult it would be, and that's why it took us so many years to do it. But we always felt that if we would take uh, gambles like that and put ourselves out there, um, and if we had the endurance to see it through, it, it would be a different way, because rather than just getting on the radio and doing some things that we just don't have the ability to do. Yeah. What was the uh, idea behind the movie and talk about it for a minute? Well, Explain we, it to everybody. Well, uh, you know, when, uh, when we started, we didn't really want to be referred to as a band. You know, we thought it'd be cooler if we were more like a collection of artists or a production house. So we had ideas. We'll make music. We can make films. We can do things like toys and graphic novels. But the film idea was like, well, let's just start with a collection of artistic vignettes. And then Will Eubank came back with this stuff that was much better than that, but it wasn't, it wasn't a film, though. We're in this, like, gray area. So we just, uh, we just kept investing and investing and, and taking our time. And the reason it took so long is because even the space station was... It, that's from, like, Home Depot. And it, it took him six months, and he made that by hand in his parents' driveway. The, the whole Civil War thing is in his parents' backyard. They own uh, 30 acres outside of Santa Barbara County. And he dug that with his neighbor's tractor, and his mom and him made cannons and mortars. So, I mean, literally, it's all done by hand. We did it for just over, over 500 grand, but it took... Um, it literally took four years to do that, um, and we learned a lot, you know, and, and we want to do more, and, and I love film, and I, uh, you know, you know me, I'm always into that kind of stuff, and so I, it's like painting, you know, and, and you can really, uh, you can express yourself with movies in such a different way, it's really interesting. Uh, you're the producer on the film. What did the uh, other guys do? Ilan, what did you do for the film exactly? <laughs> Being the new guy. Nothing to do with it. Nothing at all Nothing. to do with it? Yeah. No. I like your work. <laughs> Matt, how, how are you and David involved? Um, we, 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 uh, answered, answered what did a lot do, of actually? Really good right music. Now. Well, yeah, I mean, for, you know, that was our first experience film scoring, I guess you could say. All right, I want, I want to talk to the other guys in the band now. Dave, uh, I know that you race motorcycles. You still race motorcycles? Uh, it's not that I don't still race motorcycles. It's just that sometimes I just I, I, I haven't in a while. So I shouldn't say that I don't, but I just haven't this year. This year has been sort of encompassed by. What's other the things. fastest that you've gone? Uh, I I don't know because you don't really look at the speedo, you know. The but, speedo? Uh, the speedometer. <laughs> okay, the speedometer. speedometer. Yeah. In round know, terms, so, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. Somewhere over 180 or something. 180 like miles an hour. But on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't think about it. You're just trying to get from uh, one point to the next point as fast as you can go. So you don't think about how fast you're going to get there. You just think about how fast it is to get there. Like, and Tom's told me about this a, a few times. And he said that uh, at a certain point, it's just whoever has the biggest balls is going to win. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so whoever will push so. it as far yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. So do you think you have the biggest balls? No. <laughs> no? You won. Guys but you've are, won. But you've won. Yeah, but I won, like, I, I, yeah, but I won a very modest, like, Will you just own up like, and say, I have the biggest balls? <laughs> I, I can't do it. There's guys that are so <laughs> You're very modest. Guys That's why the ladies there, like, like you. Really That's why like the ladies like, like you. Yeah. Um, Matt, do you think you're a better bassist than I am? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do I have bigger balls? <laughs> <laughs> no. No one actually... No. And, and I know he has... Face off now. I'm, no, I'm talking about the balls right He's now. He's got huge <laughs> balls. I'm, honestly, Mark, I, and so I saw the other day... Tom I, could probably be the judge of... Those I've seen both balls. you guys naked, and I'm telling you right now, I could draw a police sketch of you naked. Said, yeah. <laughs> if like a police officer came and said, "Can you identify that man?" I said, "Yes, it looks like this." And I would uh, but you're actually really into a lot of the other things in the studio aside from playing yeah. bass. You're into like the modular synths and programming and stuff like that. A little bit of a nerd, I guess. At heart. What got you into that? Um, it's just something that I've always kind of gravitated towards. I went to 
went to college for it. Really? <laughs> yeah, I did. Weird. And, That's uh, weird to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just like the only thing I could think of. So yeah, I, I just always kind of been gravitated towards the tech side of things, kind of right brain in that way, I guess. Left brain. One of those brains. Yeah. One of the parts of the brain. Yeah. And Elon, you actually uh, started playing drums when you were 11, and you got lessons from Travis, yeah? I started playing drums when I was seven or eight years old. Oh, okay. Late, did, late bloomer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did take lessons from Travis when I was about 10, 11 years old. And then who else have you played with? I think that you need to toot your own horn a little bit here, because you played with some pretty big, amazing bands before Settling in Angels. Oh, uh, before this, I was playing Nine Inch Nails. Okay, cool. And that was cool. And uh, before that, I played with a band from the UK called Lost Profits. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So what gives each of you guys anxiety? I'll start with you, Tom. What's your main anxiety in the world? Well, you know, it used to be a lot of, uh, I used to think the world was going to end. I used to think that, oh, my God, it's all 2012. That's it. That's all we got. Uh, and I actually used to get a lot of anxiety by staying up all night long and, and reading about this. I know you know that because mm -hmm. every once in a while, maybe Mark has been there where I pinned him in a corner. <laughs> and he never rolled his eyes or anything or tried to get out of the room. When I start talking, that's actually a total lie. He would roll his eyes and try and get a bubble. Come back. But, uh, but now I think it's... Uh, my, my, I get more anxious just, uh, I think I feel the enormity, like, especially with, with Blink when we go out in front of large crowds and, and you realize, so, like TV, you do TV every day, but I see, think there's a lot of people in that camera over there. That stuff makes me anxious a little bit. Yeah. It steals your soul. Yeah. <laughs> These, we have those cameras that actually steal your soul, yeah. so you are very right to be anxious. <laughs> David, what do, you, what do you get anxious about? Uh, honestly, the older I've gotten, the more I just kind of learned that none of that really... You know, the things you stress about and things you get anxiety about don't necessarily change the actual outcome, mm -hmm. uh, at least not for the better. So the older I've gotten, I kind of just cruise. So wow. in everyday life, I just... So you're an actual, like, grown man with a healthy yeah, attitude towards cruise, life. You know? <laughs> I don't I appreciate that at all. I would say this stuff, is, like, Tom, I can definitely, I, you know, getting, doing this kind of stuff always kind of makes me feel a little off. But in shows, I always just want to get going. So that anxious feeling comes with just wanting to get going. Mm -hmm. All right. Matt, what are you upset about? We, we recently did What's a, your problem? <laughs> I, I, where do I begin? <laughs> we, um, we recently did a like thing Kermit with Fathom problem. where it was like, you know, it's, you know. You did a th thing with what? It was at this company, Fathom, where they pretty much, they broadcast a performance like across like 500 movie theaters. So not only is it like, and so we're playing in a room and there's these cameras just looming like right. So as the cameras start coming in, the girl, woman standing on their clipboard, she's like, my hand starts doing this. I'm like, oh my god, I can't stop it. And the more I thought about it, the more I just became infected through my whole body. So, <laughs> just when there's that, like, just live TV fell. performances yeah. are pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. But so it's completely live. Yeah. yeah. So you actually yeah. have to play correctly. Yeah. That sucks. You actually have to play. It was pretty, that's some bullshit. And you're on a big pretty. screen too, so people so see. Yeah, you're it's giant, like they're sitting in you know? a movie theater and they're not drunk. Well, as far as I know, but it's uh, that always gives you a little bit of leeway to make mistakes, but. Pretty nerve-wracking. And Alon, you're the new guy. What uh, what gives you anxiety? Well, I'm a, I'm a fairly neurotic person, <laughs> so. Your body little, language says that. Little things like not really knowing. Whether your hair I'm, falls into your face. Exactly, that's a defense mechanism. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go <laughs> ahead. I uh, just not really knowing what's going to be happening. It could be something as simple as in a day. What am I doing in a few hours? It yeah. Sounds very bizarre. I, mean, I just like to be structured. So when I don't know the variables, variables. Right. Give it's actually me really true. I mean, we're getting cl closer with Alana's lately, but we yeah. can just see like he's oh yeah, but what are we going to do? Are we going to meet here first and then go there? And I'm just like I, I don't know. We just. It just happens. You just well, you know, most people know the answers to those questions. But, you guys but don't, don't. It makes me I think anxious. you guys, honestly, I think you guys <laughs> as a man need to work on your communication. Because Elon no, no, is obviously it. feeling very left out and no, alien at this point. We did, no, well, no, that's it's just not because he's left out. It's just that we we'll don't know the actual... No. We just kind of like... We know we're going to be there at 12. It's, you know, he's like, Everybody you know. operates differently. Yeah. These guys right. are a group of themselves. And I'm new to that. It's been, a, been about a month. Right. So they know the way they work. I'm still learning the ropes. Do you want to sit here? Why don't you trade seats?